Long before he was President Trump's campaign chairman, Paul Manafort was paid millions by a Russian billionaire with close ties to Vladimir Putin. According to one report, secretly promising to greatly benefit the Putin government by influencing politics and media coverage. Now NBC News has learned that U.S. Treasury officials are following the money trail Manafort left behind. It led them and us to a small island in the Mediterranean. To find out more, we came here to Cyprus, to the city of Limassol, which has a reputation for its beaches and as a hub for money laundering. This city has attracted so many Russians, in fact, it's been dubbed Limassol Grad. This is where some of the money Manafort got from the Russian tycoon went. Banking sources with direct knowledge of the transactions tell NBC News at least 15 accounts were opened here for more than 10 companies, all linked to Manafort. The sources say that in one case, a million dollars landed in one of these accounts and left it on the same day. Movements of large amounts of money very quickly in and out of accounts is uh, uh, very similar to what money launderers do. And there was a lot of money involved, including $18.9 million to buy a Ukrainian media company for Oleg Daripaska, who, according to WikiLeaks, State Department officials described as one of two to three oligarchs Putin turns to on a regular basis. Documents from a legal action show that some of that money from Deripaska went to a Manafort-linked company in Cyprus. Today, Deripaska took out an ad in national newspapers denying the Associated Press report that he hired Manafort to help the Putin government, calling it fake news. But eventually, even in Cyprus, Manafort's accounts raised suspicions. In 2012, the internal auditing system at Lakey Bank flagged some of the accounts for possible money laundering, according to the banking sources, who also said that when the bank asked for more information, Manafort chose to close the accounts without answering the questions. Late today, a spokesman for Paul Manafort sent us a statement saying all Manafort's companies were legitimate entities and established for lawful ends, adding Mr. Manafort has no specific personal recollection of the shutdown of his Cyprus accounts, which he says took place during a banking crisis on the island. He has repeatedly denied working for the Russian government. Richard, other than the Manafort name, his former position with Trump, all the information that's been given in this season of investigations, why is all this unusual and getting so much attention specifically? Well, frankly, Brian, it's been a little bit hard to follow because there's been so many reports and so much information calling coming out, not just about Paul Manafort, but about so many others linked to the Trump administration and allegedly tied to Russia. But you have to look at the sequence of events and look at the chronology. 2005, according to an AP report, there is this memo from Manafort, and we, we talked about that in, in the story, and uh, allegedly in this memo in 2005, Manafort promises to work to benefit the Putin government. Then, after that, he starts a business relationship and uh, Manafort says it was nothing wrong, nothing improper about this business relationship with Oleg Deripaska. So first you have the memo, which Manafort says he, he, he can't verify, and which Oleg Deripaska today completely rejected. Then you have this business relationship that starts, and while this business relationship is happening, you have all of these business connections in Cyprus that are now getting a lot of attention. So you have to look at the sequence of events. What was the what was the basis for their uh, relationship, what promises were made, and then how were these business transactions actually taking place and where they were taking place. And that's why, where this Cyprus piece comes in. Our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, chasing down this branch of this story tonight in our London Bureau. Richard, thank you as always. Absolutely, Brian. Coming up, forgive yourself for thinking health care reform is dead. The president tonight has revealed a new prognosis. Charlie Sykes will be our interpreter when the 11th hour continues. There's a new way to measure if it's faster, easier, and far more efficient. Introducing the 3-in-1 